you know, politically we're in this place where, you know, there's a big maklokas going on in the world where you have, you know, um, you know, Russia headed by Putin and, you know, he may invade, you know, um, he may invade um, Ukraine's and, you know, America. So it's a big mock locus between both. But uh, Rabbi Pinkas said something, you know, really amazing yesterday. He was saying that, you know, we're talking about uh, two different philosophies. You know, you're talking about um, a man who is created by the institution. And then you have the man who is a self-made man. And so those two different ideologies is what we're seeing going back and forth, you know, who, Who's right? What is the right way for the world to be governed? You know, is it the, the man that's created from the pyramid structure or is it the man that, you know, picks up and creates on his own? And so I think that idea could be used as um, somewhat of an insight to when we're talking about Purim, we're talking about a Jew that was much different than the Jew that was on Mount Sinai. The Jew on Mount Sinai was leaving, you know, slavery, was leaving this terrible situation in, in a way, like in the desert, there was no food, they only had mana, you know, these different things built them, but they were at a point, you know, the, the Midrash says, it's like, it's almost like um, the Midrash used the analogy of Hashem holding two mountains over the, over, holding the mountains over the heads of, of the Jewish people as they were going to Mount Sinai. And the Mepharshim say, it's not that it was Dafka that the Shum held mountains over them, but it was the fact that the truth and the emet of the Torah was so real. It was as if there were mountains held over their head where they had no choice to accept the Torah. That was on Mount Sinai. But over here, over here, we're talking about a Jew that was in a situation where they had to change the structure of the universe, that their lives were endangered, the future of Kal Israel was in danger. The bringing of the Mashiach was in danger. Everything was in danger during this particular time of the world. The, the balance of humanity stood with the Jewish people and their ability to live or not live. Because as we learn in this week's Parsha, Hashem says to Moshe, if you destroy the Jewish people, Moshe says to Hashem, if you destroy the Jewish people, take me out of the book. Because you're talking about a whole new system now. You're talking about a completely new computer program that has never existed before will have to come into place without the Jewish people. Because this is the purpose of the Jewish people is to bring this Torah into this world, to fuel it with light, to allow humanity to continue to advance into new millenniums. So we're talking about two different types of Jews here. We're talking about the creation of a new Jew. Purim, the fast, that Zakari talked about, that happened on Pesach a time where there's supposed to be a Seder. And he said, no, at this particular moment, this is the technology we need to use to literally change the stars. So we're talking about removing denim. And these things we're talking about, there's a decree. This is how the universe is designed. The universe is designed in a particular way. And that's why this din is gonna happen. So in order for din to change, that system of planet earth and all the galaxies and all the solar systems has to change. And so when the Jewish people fasted on during the time of Pesach, they used that Rukhnius, that Kedusha, that Shepha of new beginnings, of new creation, of a new Seder, and they, used, they did it in a different way. Even to the point when Esther said it to Mordecai, we need to fast, he was like, whoa, like how am I going to convince the Jews to fast on Pesach, right? So this idea leads to a big part of the Torah that I've received here at Bastina Kedisha, which is this idea of, you know, first we have to address the failure of the civil rights movement in America, right? We have to address, we, we, we have to, we, we have to address, you were concerned with the deposit until Robbie comes up. How do you do the deposit? Oh, it was in the middle. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, we're gonna pause for a second. Okay, so we had a we had a commercial uh, Super Bowl commercial delay. <laughs> but I was just gonna say, you know, you know, um, the Torah that 
I've been able to really connect to here at Bastina Kadisha, having the merit to running at so many great institutions in Israel that I feel like created the vessel for me to be able to learn here is this idea, you know, I'm saying as um, a person who grew up in America, it's like the, the civil rights movement, you know, was a failure, but also a gift because the whole concept of the civil rights movement was based off of the equality and the desires that Black people had in America during that time, which were all justified. I mean, my family's a part of the civil rights movement. You know what I mean? Like I'm a great, great grandchild of the civil rights movement. And that's another reason why Americans, Black Americans have so much co-op and so much, um, because we saw the world change to a degree, but it was still a failure because the condition of Black people in America has not really improved. You know, the quality of life for us has not improved, but it's a gift because now from here, learning the Torah, learning with Rabbi Pinkas Eliyahu and Basina Kadisha, now I can look and define blackness in a new way. What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be dark? What is this idea of choshech? Now I can sit in front of the world and say, I'm proud to be black because who I am is unknown. Mm. It's a concealed entity that has shown us tucked away in the universe that no one knows about, right? And what is the beauty of that? The beauty of that is that now I can peel away my identity, this, this Choshek, and I could bring or to my existence through the Torah. And why is that a gift? Because I'm not the only black person in the world that really doesn't know their, their identity is concealed. You can have the whole continent of Africa is concealed, right? African-Americans concealed. So as the same way that we talked about the battle between Putin and Biden and this, this, these two different men, the man of the system and the man of, 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 of making. And we could look at the Jew of the time of Har Sinai in the Jew of the time of Sushan. And those are two different Jews. One was receiving out of a Rachmanus. The other one received because they decided. The failure of the civil rights movement is that it only focused on black people. There were all types of people that were suffering in America. There was all types of other groups. There was Hispanics or American Indians. There were women, white women. Every, they weren't even allowed to vote. But it was only a singular focus. But now, being black in the frame of the Torah, and I reveal my light through my Avodah Hashem, through my tshuva, through my transformation, now it's not about me being black. It's about the whole world not knowing who they are. Every group of people on planet Earth has no clue who they really are. And that's why we could go to war with each other. That's why we could allow a group of people to be in famine. That's why we could have people who look down on another group of people. How could you look down on your brother? So this idea of where we're at now, we're creating a new man. That's what we're doing with this Torah. It's a small group of guys, but you know what? The American Revolution was started with a small group of guys. And I'm sure every great movement that has ever existed in history started with a small group of men sitting at a table figuring out life, discussing life, and building a co op to go and influence their brothers and sisters. So we have to envision what does this new man look like? What does a new white man look like? What does a new yellow man look like? What does a new red man look like? Not the rapper. What does a new black man look like? Because if my existence is saying that if I'm black and I take on all the colors of all of humanity and that's who I am, that means as I release myself, I'm releasing all of humanity. And as we've been learning in our Torah, that if we don't have the 70 nations in our mind, there's no Shepherd. If we don't rule and have and give judgments and leadership from a place of Hesed for all the 70 nations, for all the people, you know, there's no, there's no uh, Hesed being revealed. There's no Gevura, there's no Tefer, all the way to Malchut, there's nothing manifesting in this world unless we have in mind all the nations. So now blackness as it's defined in this yeshiva is 
a, a is is an identity of concealment that can only be revealed through God do nothing else, no institution, no private interest group, nothing. We can only reveal ourselves through God. And, and as we learned on a deeper level, blackness is also a level of the soul. It's not just the skin complexion. The skin complexion is saying, you have no choice but to confront this. But there are souls that are have black souls, meaning that these souls are also concealed that need to be revealed. This is our connection to all of humanity. So again, I want to thank Rabbi Pincas for sharing his Torah and uh, empowering and, and that we all take on this responsibility for all of humanity, that all of humanity can see that in the same way that Hashem using these people that have been identified as black, as being people who were concealed, that, that their identity was, was tucked away in Shemaim and that only can be revealed through the vote of Hashem, that they see themselves in that same way. Because the person who calls himself white, they're not white. They're Selim Elohim. The people who have more money than someone else, they're not rich. They're Selim Elohim. And all of these people have a responsibility, but they don't know. So through us, the people who've been kicked around, the people who've been abused, the people who've been, the others, the people who've been hung, the people who've been murdered, the people who've been raped, the people who've been pillaged, those people, we, can talk to everybody in the world and we can show them that no you're not that savage person you're actually an image of god and you need a new system and when we go into our communities we can say you know what you're not a crip you're not a blood you are salam elohim you have a responsibility in this world and we can spread this idea all over the world so and may we all only know happiness is Rabbi Elazar has taught us.